So the ones that impress me are the ones I can articulate the best. So we go back to Dr. Davis. Dr. Davis worked with Stanford University and basically showed that young women historically now are putting cell phones into their brassiere. And I hope none of you listening in the room or on the air is doing that. So Stanford actually showed the shape of the cancers. What's the name of that cancer? It's a, it's a new form of cancer. Unusual with several unusual cancer. It was breast it was in, cancer. It was in the but shape it was of the battery. A multifocal cancer yeah. so, that they don't normally see. And it was also in a location under the phone when normally you see them more off. So it was an unusual place for it to be right in the, towards the center of the chest. Second one that was mind boggling and, and clear uh, Yale University did a study where men put a cell phone into their pocket within 30 seconds. Not 30 minutes, not 30 days, 30 seconds. 40% of the sperm was neutered. Now, the guys who were carrying the cell phones in your pocket, because you don't have a purse to put it in, didn't want that to be true. Just three or four years ago, Exeter University, which is an Ivy League school in England, came up with the same exact number. So this is a done deal. You have two independent studies like that. These are the kind of, how many studies? Thousands, maybe 25,000? But these are the ones people understand. In the shape of the, of the battery and sperm count, 40% less than 30 seconds. Okay, so assuming that there's 20,000 studies, the results have been poor, um, what exactly do I do to get the maximum protection to myself? What, can, what is everything I could do if I don't want any of the bad results from Wi-Fi, from cell phones, from any wireless technology, take me through everything we could possibly do to completely protect ourselves. What are the very best things we could do? What's our options? I'm gonna say start with your bedroom, actually. Just beginning the process. You've just heard about this. It might seem a little overwhelming. Start with your sleep so you don't have those disrupted brain waves of which have been replicated over and over again in research and even the even industry actually agrees that brain waves change during sleep from this radiation. So take a look. What do you have in your room? Do you sleep with your phone? The phone should be off, and it should not be under your pillow. Um, it should be away from the bed. You get a battery-powered alarm clock to wake you up. Um, do you have a router in your bedroom? You have to first notice what, do an assessment. Do you have a virtual, one of those speakers, Echoes or Alexas and, and those things? They should not be in your bedroom. At night, you can turn the Wi-Fi off. Figuring out how to hardwire is a next step. I've done it. I don't have Wi-Fi in my house, but you can't do it tonight. So you're going to have to learn how to do that. I hope everyone learns and gets the technology to do that. But in the meantime, you can turn the wireless antennas off um, at night. Go. Do you have electrical cords, uh, lamps, all of this actually, you want to decrease the electrical fields as well. You don't want extension cords running under your bed. Or I went to someone's house, they had an old, an old alarm clock, probably from when they were teenagers, and it was right by their head, and there's very strong electrical fields that are coming off of that as well. So you just don't want anything electric in your space. And, um, that's the first step. Then learning how to, I don't know if any of you else want to speak too, but learning how to reduce exposure to your cell phone. Um, I mean, I would recommend not using your cell phone less, um, significantly less, and using more wired technology. So we have, well actually I can't get a corded landline because they don't have them in our community. So what I had to do is get a corded landline that goes off the router, which is wired and doesn't have wireless. So I tried to get a copper line. This is another lawsuit that's happening right now, uh, the regulators versus the FCC. Everyone has been paying on our monthly bills for years money to maintain our copper lines. But the wireless industry moved it into paying for wireless. And now if you try to get a copper line, you can't in many communities. Yeah, and that's a whole lawsuit happening, a regulators versus the FCC, because this money has been shifted for not what it was supposed to be for. But you still can get off of your internet provider 
a uh, corded line. Make sure it is not a home cordless phone. So when I first learned about this issue, I got rid of everything, but I didn't realize that cordless phones, the kind that is in your home, the base is emanating radiation all the time, wireless radiation. Some people are sleeping with this near their heads. Get a regular, the kind with the curly, that kind of phone is the phone that you uh, want to do the majority of your voice calls on. And um, so you kind of want to assess, swap out. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with your cell phone. It doesn't mean it's safe because it really, uh, safe is 100% uh, the, the wired technology. But you can do things like turn off antennas you're not using. Turn off the Wi-Fi if you're not using that. Turn off the mobile hotspot. Turn off the Bluetooth. Your phone is always on and radiating even when you're not on the phone. So you have to learn information to know uh, how, to, how to reduce exposure in that way. And I see a lot of kids and everyone asks like about the little white things that they all they have in their ears. Um, those are also emitting radio frequency radiation and they actually have a slightly different kind of technology where one is connecting to the other one and then it connects to the phone. So um, that's going through your head. And um, plus you have the phone which ra is radiating that's probably on your body. I was just dismayed. I came up here on the train. Every teenager had that in their head. And I thought, oh no, <laughs> you know, I don't get out much. Uh, and because um, I'm working so much all the time, I just, uh, getting into the city, I just was shocked at, at that. And teens need to be educated on this. There's also, we haven't even talked about this, we've talked about so many things, but there's research showing impacts to hearing, actually, the hearing and hearing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say it's actually worse than the walls of amplifiers we had in the 60s. That's out of India, if you're interested. In ear. And also, to the regions, like in animal research, actually the regions of the brain uh, that deal with hearing are impacted. So, I, I, the list is long. I agree with those things. <laughs> you, you control your environment, and by reducing all those sources of emissions in your environment, improves the probability that you're not gonna be influenced negatively by those exposures. But I'd like to mention a little bit more than that. It's the distance and time you use it. Distance is your friend. If you get farther away from those signals, the less likely it influences the body. The other thing is time. If you use a cell phone for five minutes, you'll never die. You use it for three hours a day, 24 days, uh, 20, uh, full, 24 hours a day, it now becomes accumulative to the body, and the body then has the more serious action. So you really want to monitor time and distance. But the most important in all of this is you've heard me talk about immune systems. You, you heard me talk about suppression of body responses. And, and I'm gonna let Brian talk a little bit about that because that is so important more than ever before.